Okay, so I'm moving away from the adventure game examples because I think they're becoming slightly more convoluted and I want to strip it back to make sure everybody understands what these keywords mean. So the next one I want to cover is aggregation. So aggregation and composition, which is the next video I'm going to do, are talking about uh, where two objects have a relationship with each other and they're two of the most common types. So I'm going to show you how to do this and we'll talk about the differences. So what we've got here is we've got an employer class, which has just got name, age, and pay. That's straightforward. And then we've got an employee class that again has got name, age, and pay. And it's got a little method that returns its pay. Now, I've used this as an example because it's something that it is clearly potentially open to having relationship. Because if we even if we're taking these as people, this could be a company, it might be slightly different. But the employee might have a relationship with the employer. So it could be its boss, for example. So to do that, one approach you could take is aggregation, which in this case will probably be the right approach. So what we could do is we could add a boss attribute and we could make it equal whatever we pass to it in that form. But what we're going to actually pass is an object in itself. So if we make a uh, two people, so let's make plop equals um, employer and name Jürgen, uh, and we'll say he's something like 45, and he's on. I don't know, we'll keep it as an integer, um, 80,000. And then underneath that, we'll have Nunes, who is an employee. Darwin, um, and he's... 23 and is on 100,000. So what we've created there is two objects, but for the employee, which is Nunes, we need to pass it a boss. So because we've already made clop the object, we can pass that through. And then what that's going to allow us to do is use and access some boss information within the employee object. So this can be really useful. So if I go down to show this working, look, we run it, it gets no errors. Let's say we want another method here, but we'll call it boss wage. And it will show you that within this object here or this instance, so noon is in this example, what we can do is we can get it to return I don't know the difference between the pay so we could call it pay difference and what we could say is return the boss wage so the way you do that is you'd write boss because it's the pointer essentially to the other object and then uh, so it'll be boss dot pay minus self dot pay and then what we can do is we can run a print and we can run that method. So uh, it will be Nunes dot pay difference. Uh, it says boss is not defined. Uh, self dot boss. I always forget that. So you can see there's a minus 20,000 difference between what the boss earns compared to what Nunes earns in this example. So that's a, a, an example of aggregation where you are creating a relationship between Nunes and Klopp. And it means within this object, I can re reference my boss because people could have different bosses, for example. I could reference my boss and it will also always point to the boss at which I've got a relationship to, which in this case is clock. Now, the key thing to understand with aggregation, because you're going to see me do this in a different way with composition, 
is with aggregation, the objects, while they have a relationship, are independent. So what I mean is, if Nunes was deleted, Clot would still live. Okay, if Clot was deleted, Nunes would still live. So they are independent instances of objects that aren't relying on each other to survive, but they do hold and store some form of relationship. But again, the other example here is this relationship isn't two way in this example. So Nunes has a relationship with the boss Klopp, but from this view here, Klopp as an object doesn't necessarily have a relationship with Nunes. So I'll go over composition next. And I think once you know that, when you come to a problem where you want to create a relationship of sorts between two objects, it should hopefully be clear which approach you should take.